morning, everyone. TGIF. Welcome to Showcase Minnesota. I'm Rob Hudson. Hi, everybody, and I'm Hope Science. Good morning to you. Mm -hmm. Still ahead this morning, keep your dog healthy and happy. We'll get some tips from a celebrity dog trainer. Plus, Coming up, reasons to sit and stay, training your dog to behave. We'll get some commanding advice from an expert. Welcome back to the show. Did you know today is Responsible Dog Ownership Day, a time dedicated to training pets to be not only our best friends, but good citizens as well. And our next guest has some tips on how to keep your pet safe, happy, and healthy. Joining us now on behalf of Wellness Dog Food and Brampton is pet expert Andrea Arden. Welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you for having us. It's great to have you. What's the most important thing we should know uh, and be aware of for our dog's health? I would say probably the most important consideration is what we feed our pets. Um, mm -hmm. According to a recent Harris survey, only about 38% of dog owners even bother to look at the list of ingredients on the food that they choose, which is kind of surprising considering that most of us really consider our dogs to be part of the family. So we really do need to give it a little more thought. Um, and what I suggest to people is make sure you read the label, turn the bag around. You're looking for a list of ingredients like the wellness dog food where the first thing you see should be a protein, something like chicken, beef, or fish. Mm -hmm. When you look down that list, you should be able to recognize and pronounce everything you see there. Um, and you also want to make sure that you don't see anything that's a potential allergen, like wheat, wheat gluten, soy, um, certainly no artificial flavorings, colors, or preservatives. It's just not necessary in the food. Okay, now we've got the diet uh, figured out. How about as far as behavioral problems, like housebreaking house breaking your pet? Yeah, house training is definitely everyone's top concern, understandably. Um, and it's unfortunate that people get so stressed and frustrated about house training when it really comes down to one simple thing, which is being a good doggy time manager. And what I mean is that you need to use three tools to manage your dog's time to set them up for success so they're not likely to make mistakes. Those tools are on-leash supervision, that is keeping your dog on a leash at all times when you're there to supervise them until they're house trained. And if you can't watch them for short periods of time, confine them to their crate where they have a good toy to play with. And if you need to leave them for longer than you think they can reasonably hold it in the crate, they can be confined to something called an X-Pen or to a small room like a bathroom or a small kitchen. But in those three ways, you're setting your dog up to be successful, meaning you're not letting them wander about and make mistakes. If, however, even being that diligent, your dog does have an occasional accident, nobody's mm -hmm. 100%, right. um, then you do need to make sure to thoroughly clean up the area. Don't use a typical household cleaner. It will just clean topically. You need something that's made specifically to be safe and to, and to work efficiently on pet stains and odors. Simple Solution is a really good example. It's a, their pet stain and odor remover. Why? Because it's made from bacteria and enzyme um, formula, which means that it's going to get deep into that smell and get it out so that your dog isn't likely to remark in that area. Okay, Andrew, here's one for you. What type of tip do you have for maybe a first time pet owner? First time pet owners, if I had to choose just one tip, it would be after you make a visit to the vet, which is something you should do right away when you get your new dog, make sure they're healthy, you should make a visit to the, the local pet store and buy yourself at least five to ten food stuffable chew toys. These are also called puzzle or enrichment toys. They're toys that are hollow in the middle so that you can take your dog's normal food or special treats, put it inside of those toys, and every day make sure to give your dog two or three of them so that they're kept busy and they get to burn off mental and physical energy trying to sort of hunt for their food out of these toys. Sure. Much yeah. better than feeding from a bowl. Yeah, make a game out of it. Hey, how about uh, safety products that maybe we should know about? Um, some good safety tips I would suggest are, of course, I think everybody knows this, but it's worth saying again, don't let your dog ride loose in a car. Um, you know, it's not safe. We're secured in the car using a seatbelt. There are doggy seatbelts or your dog can be in a crate. Oh, okay. And since a lot of people work really late hours now, and by the time we get home and want to take our dog for a nice walk and enjoy spending time with them, we need to make sure that if it's dark out, we're as visible as possible and our dog is as well. So that means you should use something like the Pup Light, which is a great device. It actually hooks onto your dog's collar. It's a very bright light, which means that cars passing by can see both you and your dog. All right, Andrea, thank you so much. Great job. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. You bet. For more information on all the things we talked about, go to ShowcaseMinnesota.com and click on the Friday link.